In this video we want to have a quick look how you can create something really simple out of the box. How to be able to change it in a parametric way, uh, like this one. And also really interesting how to make it smooth and uh, like a really organic object. And here again, then be able to uh, change the design because uh, you still have full control of your uh, parameters. Okay, let's start with a simple box. I want to have a box with a length of uh, 40 by 40 centimeters and a height of actually 3 centimeters. Like this, I go into create and uh, here we go. And uh, here I would like to create a chair back and uh, chair legs. So what we do is we just add an added poly on top. Uh, like uh, like this. I just go into my T-like top view uh, and uh, uh, I quite often just use a helper object. I just go into um, rectangle and just draw, uh, draw a rectangle and this rectangle should have a size of 3 by 3 centimeters. Okay, like this. I just move it and I use my S like snap toggle right mouse click with only vertex activated. And uh, I just move it to my first corner, like this. And this is my helper for my chair back. So I just activate again my uh, polygon and uh, my uh, object. I just go into uh, edit geometry and here into cut. And I just want to have a, a cut along my uh, polygon. So what I activate, I also activate actually edge. And now I go into my top view again. I activate my top view and I just cut an edge from one side to the other like this. This doesn't look good so far, but I can just go into vertice right now and uh, zoom in a little bit. Sorry, I have to deactivate my cut function. That's really important, otherwise uh, doesn't work and I just choose my first vertex and I just align it to my uh, little helper objects and right mouse click obviously I have to deactivate edge again uh, to make this properly and also here I just go and select my vertex and I just align it to my top and this is already the starting point for my um, chair back. Okay, what I do is I go into polygon, I just select this polygon by the way and uh, I use my animate mode and uh, to have this parametric and uh, I just go into extrude, I can also go into bevel by the way and I just enter 30 centimeters and I uh, finish with my enter uh, return uh, key and uh, I can also bevel this a little bit, you can just see uh, if okay, I just bevel it for uh, 0 0.5 centimeters, like uh, like this. And I finish this right now. So this is the back of my chair, and I just rename it this with um, edit poly uh, bevel back. Okay, and I do the same thing. Uh, with my legs I go into my bottom view and here I do it slightly different because uh, to be honest the method before was not really optimized because I had my edge mode switched on and just switch it off and uh, what I do is I just take my little helper menu I just copy it uh, to the side and move it to uh, the right corner here and uh, I again select my uh, object and uh, I go into cut function and just because I have my object uh, obviously I have to put another edit uh, poly on top uh, which should not be in uh, animate mode uh, I go into my cut function and I just see that, uh, that it snaps to my helper objects it's really uh, really good and so I cut the first line, I choose my two helper objects, uh, this one and also uh, this one with my uh, string key and I just move it uh, down to the lower point and again I choose my uh, chair and uh, I go into cut 
and just snap my points from my helper object. Here you go, right mouse click. And uh, if I turn it around, it looks uh, really good. And so the last thing I have to do is I just go into Edit Poly and, um, sorry, on the higher polygon level, I just select my two, uh, two polygons. And uh, again, I go into my animate mode and uh, I go into extrude or bevel, depends. And I uh, extrude it uh, 30 centimeters and uh, use my ender. And I can also bevel it if I want to do this in whatever kind of direction, like 0 0.5 centimeters. And uh, I go out of the menu and I uh, rename this and just say edit poly, poly bevel uh, legs. Okay, but how can you make something really nice and organic out of this? And there's a modifier you can use. Uh, this modifier is named uh, Mesh Smooth. If I put Mesh Smooth on top, it doesn't look good uh, for the first step and you have to extend the increase iterations but be aware of uh, uh, normally three iterations is already enough and I will show you in the next step what this means and I'll also show you how you can control it in a better way. The first thing I do is I just put an edit poly on top and then you can see that the mesh smooth, smooth actually increases the amount of polygons. If I go into Mesh Smooth again and I have Show End Result Toggle On, then you can still see the grid and if I increase the iterations you can see that it's getting more fine and you can already have an idea if I enter uh, 10 iterations that my computer probably uh, sta starts collapsing. So uh, what I do is I just choose my Edit Poly and I just put my Edit Poly underneath my Mesh Smooth and there's a reason for this. If you choose your Mesh Smooth, uh, there's one option. You can organize your uh, Mesh Smooth by smoothing groups. That's quite uh, sounds quite complex, but it's at the end of the day, once you understood it, uh, quite easy. So you go down into Parameters and you say Separate by Smoothing Groups. And now this thing looks completely different. And the reason why it looks different because it's related to the smoothing groups underneath in my edit poly. If I go into the modifier edit poly underneath, I already rename it and just say edit poly smoothing groups. So I know what uh, this edit poly is about. And I go into my polygons. And if I select my polygon, for example, like this one, I can scroll down, hold on list by the way, and um, we can see that if we select different kind of polygons, then uh, something changes in my uh, in my smoothing group. This has smoothing group number five. This has smoothing group number three, number four. I'm sorry. This number three. And if I choose this one, or if I also give this one number three, we can just see that the corner uh, is uh, then uh, wound and that it becomes nice and smooth and that you can have a nice smooth surface just with, with changing the smoothing group. So what I do, I just select everything and if you can see this uh, field without any number, this means that every uh, polygon has several kind of smoothing groups and uh, I just deselect everything. I just deselect everything and just go out of my smoothing groups. So every uh, group now has a smoothing group zero. You can also just say that every uh, smoothing, uh, every object or every polygon has smoothing group one if this feels uh, better to you. So uh, what I do is I just uh, go into my edit poly and I just say show end result toggle off. The reason why I do this is because I want to select polygons and if you see when I, s uh, then I go into show end result toggle off that the geometry changes and sometimes it's difficult to select polygons if this end result toggle is on. So I just switch it off and I go into my select objects and I select this and uh, this polygon and I deselect smoothing group 1 I just give it, uh, put it into smoothing group 2 and we just see uh, what kind of impact this had 
I already produced some more yeah, like this nice legs and if I just give this also smoothing group one then you can see that it goes back and uh, uh, so everything which uh, is, is not in the same smoothing group has a clear edge and everything which is in the same smoothing group for example like smoothing group one with these kind of surfaces um, we we'll get a really nice and round uh, shape. So we do very few changes to give you some more examples. I go out of the smoothing group again because here you can see I really have difficulties to select this nice uh, edge on top and if I just switch off the smoothing group I can select it like this and I just give this also smoothing group number two and we just see uh, what it actually uh, actually does. I don't like it so much. I'll just give it a smoothing group number two, uh, number one again. And uh, I also see that there are some creases here. So I think about uh, extending my mesh smooth to iterations number four. And this uh, looks uh, definitely better. So you already have an idea that uh, you can um, shape this thing quite well. And uh, the whole idea of this is that you can work with these kind of mesh smooth if you have very few polygons. So it's a low polygon modeling and with mesh smooth you get a really nice organic shape. So the more polygons you have inside, the more complex it gets. So on this level I already have a lot of things to, uh, to optimize and to change. Uh, for example, I can open this mesh smooth. We can see that I can go into an edge mode in this mesh smooth and I can select uh, for example here these edges and I just select this edge because I want to change this edge a little bit and um, here's something like um, something like weight and you can change the weight and you can just see what's happening it just press it saves a little bit uh, a little bit in uh, inside which is quite helpful for this kind of uh, kind of chair and I can do this with all my uh, edges and uh, really um, really work on them. Let's see again. I increase the weight a little bit. And uh, I can also do this on um, on my vertex level. I can just choose this vertex point and I just can move them a little bit around already on my mesh smooth level. I can change the weight of this vertex level. I can also increase the amount of controls. So you see that I have uh, many more control points which I can uh, move. You can just see that I make little holes inside and uh, uh, this probably doesn't look too good. But if I select this one, I can even go into soft selection and just increase it and uh, then I can push it down a little bit so you see that I can really reshape my whole uh, uh, chair and optimize it and if I close all my modifiers you see that on top I have this parametric uh, level that I can change my back I just go into my back and uh, go up again into my setting of my uh, extrude and I can extrude my back I can uh, on top change my uh, bevel and the same with my uh, with my legs and just look at this this one again I just extend my legs and uh, all in uh, in this direction and uh, altogether uh, the interesting point is everything started with a really simple box Freeform modeling is a really big topic. If you want to learn more about this, you can go into Digitalis and Werfen and then Freeform modeling and you go into Mesh Smooth Modifier Freeform Subdivision and um, here you can uh, get basic information and more information of how to deal with this uh, in uh, 3D Studio Max. Thanks for watching.